Okay, see, we talking about truth. And when I hear people say, tell them your truth or that's your truth, that's their truth. I'm like, that's a lie. It's one truth. It can't be more than one truth or it would constantly be war here. Let's say I like underage girls or I'm a pedophile. That's my truth. Who are you to deny me my truth? Why should not be able to have a relationship with somebody that's underage? Who in society set the precedent? Or say I'm a rapist and I like rape. That's my truth. Who are you to come in and get in the way of that if it's my truth? Never mind I hurt somebody else. You can't expect me to give a shit about somebody else if it's my truth, right? So I don't even go by my truth. My truth was was a whole bunch of stuff that I thought was solid and thought was cool in my own mind until I had something to compare it against. And the thing that I call my truth now is the scripts or the word uh, uh, Allah, Jah, Hashem, the great and terrible power. I use all those names because I don't use the Lord's name in vain. I don't know his name per se. These the ones that I heard. So you know who I'm talking about, the great and terrible power. So it's not ambiguous, right? That's the culture I keep. That's my truth. And my truth goes something like, well, my past truth was every December 25th, I'm celebrating Christmas. And that's what that's what most people truth is. That was my truth. But when I compare that truth to the truth of, of God, who y'all call Allah Hashem, this is what he had to say about that, right? So my truth is to give gifts, celebrate, all that. Every year, just like you. That's what I grew up on. That was my truth. But then I started keeping Torah and I actually read the book. Now, this is Jeremiah 10, concerning the idols and the true God. Let me show that to y'all, too. This is the King James version of the book, right? Come on, shit. Oh, y'all gonna see this. This is the King James version. I read from the Tanakh, which is the Torah, because the translation is, is different. It gives you the tense. So certain verses, you can see exactly what they're saying. It's no trickery because the original people did it, and it wasn't rewritten by the people who had conquered those people, who, who um actually wasn't who people think they were. They 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 were Israelites, but Israelites and Muslims are the same thing. Muslims are those that are submitted to the creator. They change the name terminology all they want, but they are the same people, absolutely. It's no way that they are not. When it's one monolithic God and all these people had their hand on it, they know. It became like what people saying, your truth, my truth. They sectioned off and everybody thought that they should have a right or say, this is that truth. This is that truth. It's not. So here we go. Let, let y'all see what I meant to you. Jeremiah. Can y'all see that shit? It's still. Y'all gonna see this. Fuck that. So this Jeremiah 10. Idols and the true God. It's talking about uh, idolatry. And he's speaking about the Chaldeans. These are Abraham's original people. This is the kind of stuff he used to do. And mind you, he is married to his sister, Sarah. That's a, you have to, anyway. Thus, here we go. Idols, hear the word which the Lord speaks to your house of Israel. Thus saith the Lord. Repeatedly, I say, the word don't govern anything. This is my truth. And it's because I read it from here, not because I made it up because somebody whispered it into my ear. I'm reading it right now. Y'all can unhear it or unsee it, but I'm going to choose to keep the word the way it is written so it's not my truth. Hear the word which the Lord speaks to you, house of Israel. Thus saith the Lord, do not learn the ways of the Gentiles. And that word is just other nations or heathens. Do not be dismayed at the signs of heaven. Sun, moon, star. For the Gentiles are dismayed at them. For the customs of the people are futile. For one cuts a tree from the forest, the work of the workmen with the axe. They decorate it with silver and gold. They fasten it with nails and hammers so that it will not topple. They are upright like a palm tree and they cannot speak. They must be carried because they cannot. 
excuse me, they cannot go by themselves. Do not be afraid of them, for they cannot do evil, nor can they do any good. And he's saying this shit is in vain. That's your Christmas that y'all revere. And this is in Jeremiah 10. Before they get to that New Testament where Jesus came along, they were keeping these bullshit customs way back then. But y'all truth is Christmas. And it's still going to be your truth after I just gave you what the truth is. So when I don't celebrate Christmas, don't say, oh, that's your truth. I don't have a fucking truth. I celebrated Christmas, Easter, birthdays, all of that. Now I got something outside of myself that I haven't pieced together or taken a smidgen of this, a smidgen of that, and put it together in this one big ass fucking knot and then still say, I follow the word of God. You do not. More. Let me go to um, Deuteronomy 4. All of you talking, to, the, the cash in more in astrology, astronomy, stargazing. Um, this is Deuteronomy 4. This is Moshe giving the order. Any of you scholars know the book? Deuteronomy is Moses repeating the laws of God again. Roughly the, his last four to six weeks of his life. And the narrative, these fucks are hard-headed. So he's saying it again and again and again. This is Deuteronomy 4. And I don't know if 4 happened, but for any of other these uh, chapters, we just don't know. You know, Christian scholars are the people that conquered these folks. They turned it into a book, gave it punctuations, capitalization, and these people didn't write with letters, basically. They used symbols. So their letters were symbols. You wasn't going to capitalize a symbol, put anything in a red writing, especially a Jesus that didn't exist when all this was written, when the actual word or the order for these people was given. Jesus wasn't even created yet. Not born, because it's a lie. It wasn't even created. So this is Moshe. Oh, now, O Israel, give heed to the laws and rules that I'm instructing you to observe so that you may live and enter and occupy the land that the Lord, the God of your fathers, has given you. You shall not add anything to what I command you or take anything away from it, but keep the commandments of the Lord your God that I enjoin upon you. All right, so I'm going to stop right there. That's the first two. Then I'm going to go down. I'm going to go down a little bit to give you more instructions, but you at four now, so you can go from there. Ta-da. Here we go. Speaking of ideology, um, idolatry, Deuteronomy 4 and 12. The Lord spoke to you out of the fire. You heard the sounds of word, but perceived no shape, nothing but a voice. He declared to you the covenant that he commanded you to observe, the Ten Commandments, and he inscribed them on two, to <laughs> two tones, two tablets of stone. At the same time, the Lord commanded me to impart to you laws and rules for you to observe in the land that you're about to cross into and occupy. This is the truth that I keep. For your own sake, therefore, be most careful since you saw no sheep when the Lord your God spoke to you at Horeb out of the fire, not to act wickedly and make for yourself a sculptured image in any likeness, whatever, the form of man, woman, the, the form of the form of any beast on earth, the form of any winged bird that flies in the sky, the form of anything that creeps on the ground, the form of any fish that's in the waters below the earth. And when you look up to the sky and behold the sun, the moon, and the stars, and the whole heavenly host, you must not be Lord into bowing down to them or serving them. These the Lord your God allotted to other people's Everywhere under the heavens. So y'all, star, sun, moon, folks, that's cool. That's y'all thing, but that's not God. Don't cross those two things. That's my truth, right? Well, I just read it out of the book. How is it my truth? That's your truth. Let me go to Deuteronomy 29. He spoke about y'all too in this. Are you feeling the way right now, right? Deuteronomy 29. Y'all can start at the beginning. I'll go all the way down. Let me, let me, um, Deuteronomy 29 and 1, I just start right there, and then I go to the verse that I need to make it fit, to make you understand what, what I'm saying. Not my truth. Moses summoned all of Israel and said to them, You have seen all that the Lord did, but for your very eyes in the land of Egypt to Pharaoh and all his courtiers and to his whole country, right? So now I'm going down to 9. You stand this day, all of you before the Lord your God, your tribal heads, your elders, and your officials, all the men of Israel, your children, your wives, even the strangers within your camp, from woodchopper to water drawer, 
to enter into the covenant of the Lord your God, which the Lord your God is concluding with you this day with his sanctions, to at the end he, he may establish you this day as his people and be your God, as he promised you and as he swore to your fathers, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. I don't agree with that either. That, that'll be another video. Ish. Shout out to Ish. I make this covenant with sanctions, not with you alone, but both with those who are standing here with us this day before the Lord our God and with those who are not with us here this day. That's the future to come. That's us. Well, you know we dwelt in the land of Egypt and that we passed through the midst of various other nations through which you passed and you saw the detestable things and the fetishes of wood, stone, silver, and gold that they keep. That's why I don't deal with the crucifix, the Kaaba stone, statues, none of that. He said, make no images. That's not my truth. Harriet Tubman, Confederate statues. Be it black or white, that's not my truth. I just got here 53 years. I did not write the book, but I know how to keep this. Y'all don't keep it because you haven't read it. And now you want to have a, a debate about life. I think I have one leg up because I'm more interested in a God that we all say we believe in. I'm reading from his word. Perchance there's among you some man or woman or some clan or tribe whose heart is even now turning away from the Lord our God to go and worship the gods of those nations. Perchance there's among you a stock sprouting poison weed and wormwood right now. When such a one hears the words in these sanctions, he may fancy himself immune, thinking I shall be safe though I follow my own willful heart to the utter ruin of moist and dry alike. The Lord will never forgive him. Rather, the Lord's anger and passion rage against that man till every sanction recorded in this book comes down upon him and the Lord blots out his name from under the heavens. That's my truth. With some of the sanctions. All right, let's start. Mm, Exodus 20, where it started. The beginning of the sanctions, the 10, and then the other rules and things he gave us in Leviticus. So God spoke all these words, saying, I, the Lord your God, who brought you out of the land of Egypt, the house of bondage, you shall have no other gods but for me. Psalms 82 and 6. Lay out who gods are. Angels, they're not winged creatures. That's pretty demonic to think that a man has some wings growing out his back and his blood drinking and his, his body eating. That didn't happen in Israel. They had orders to... Anyway. You shall have no other gods besides me. Psalms 82 and 6. You shall not make for yourself a sculptured image or any likeness of what is in heaven or the earth or the waters under the earth. You shall not bow down to them or serve them. For I, the Lord your God, am an impassioned God, visiting the guilt of the parents upon the children, upon the third and upon the fourth generations of those who reject me, but showing kindness to the thousandth generation of those who love me and keep my commandments. You shall not swear falsely by the name of the Lord your God, for the Lord will not clear one who swears falsely by his name. Remember the Sabbath and keep it holy. Six days you shall labor and do all your work, but the seventh is the Sabbath. Of the Lord your God, you shall not do any work. You sh your son or daughter, your male, female, slave, your cattle, stranger was in your settlements, nobody. For in six days the Lord made heavens and the earth to see and all that is in them. He rested on the seventh day. Therefore the Lord your God blessed the seventh and hallowed it. So just don't work on the Sabbath. That's what he said. When you when you hear um, the Sabbath, that's not just the seventh. These are different days that they they counted on holy. You know, you you wasn't supposed to do work on those days. And um, I believe uh, Exodus sixteen and twelve speaks about what you could do on that day. Honor your father and your mother that you may long endure on the land that the Lord your God is assigning you. Now, most people know I have a rift with my mom and my paternal mom, but she wasn't up to task. She didn't teach me the word at the most high. People might call that whatever, but that's not my truth. I'm an only child. I've been with her, supporting her basically my whole life. Every move she made, I never questioned 
to the point of ruin, you know, to the point I was 20K back in taxes because something that my mom set me up with. And I don't think that she meant it for what it went down as, but she still didn't protect me from it. And that's the job of a parent. And me having two kids of my own, I would have never done an income tax scam with my kids, you know, knowing that that could have went wrong. And that's who she been. Not just that, it's just a whole bunch of stuff. And I'm I'm old enough to know the difference to be some fanboy or anything that's not right. So titles don't make a difference. And this and this book, when it's saying honor these things, it's saying from a perspective that they are these people that they call to be. I can't honor a prostitute of a mom. It's it's just one foot in, one foot out. If the creator is against it, I can't be for it. So you shall not murder, you shall not commit adultery, you shall not steal, you shall not bear false witness against your neighbor. You shall not cover your neighbor's house, you shall not cover your neighbor's wife, male servant, female servant, ox, ass, anything that's your neighbor's. All the people witnessed the thunder and lightning, blared the horn, the mountain smoking, and when the people saw it, they fell back and stood at a distance. That's, that's the 10. The Levitical law has a couple other things going in it. Let me go to Leviticus, right? Leviticus 18. That's where most of these laws come down. Well, the sexual laws. Um, I read Leviticus 19. The Lord spoke to Moses, and that's my caveat, right? I always say that, not my truth, but if God, the creator, not saying it, I don't honor it, and I keep the culture, and that's just what the culture is. Why would people believe each other? I could be some guy living next door to you and say, God said this, if if the creator didn't say it. It's not written down that he commanded that. And he's not giving us any new commandments. Everything that he said is here. The book was closed in Malachi. It got reopened in Matthew, but you can't find a reason to open it up. People talk about a new, a new testament. A testament is not a covenant. That's the difference between driving and traveling. Why well, I don't have a driver's license. It's a difference. You have to not be enslaved with the powers that be in their word magic. The the spells, when people say words or spells, y'all y'all thinking too too supernatural with it. You're not thinking in the natural, the repetition of what the radio does to your psyche. When you hear a song that you hate, the next thing you know you're humming that shit. You still hate that shit, but they put it on you so many times now your psyche has accepted that shit. It's all the same. So, thus saith the Lord, if the Most High didn't command it, I, I'm done with it. And most of the things I've done in my life, I didn't even know it was against the Creator. The dietary law. Man, I've been fucking up crabs for years, lobster, shrimp. But this culture, these people don't eat crustaceans. They're, they're basement dwellers. They eat flesh, and that's not healthy. You'll say, oh, there's no reason for you to keep the laws of God. But it, we just talked about somebody think they're immune against this. It's covered in here. You not new. The spirit of you has been around forever. That's why Moshe was here. Speak to the whole Israelite community and say to them, you shall be holy, for I, the Lord your God, am holy. You shall each revere his mother and father. They saying it again. Leviticus, Moses repeating it. Do not turn the idols or make molten gods for yourself. I am the Lord your God. When you sacrifice the offering of well-being, not sin, well-being. Thank you to Most High for doing all you did for me. Sacrament, not sacrifice. You don't need a sacrificial lamb. My truth, Jeremiah 7 and 22. For when I freed your fathers from the land of Egypt, I did not speak with them or command them concerning burnt offerings or sacrifice. But this is what I commanded them. Do my bidding that I may be your God and you may be my people. Walk only in the way that I enjoin upon you, that it may go well with you. Yet they did not listen or give ear. They followed their own counsels, the willfulness of their own evil hearts. They have gone backwards, not forward. Not my truth. Didn't know about that either. You know, this book is basically a road map to divinity and it's not about wearing a white gown it's about walking on this path you don't have to worry about the supernatural if you stand in order naturally i won't have to pray for a miracle healing for cancer 
if I walk in order with the Most High. He telling you you're going to live a long life. The book say that. If I wanted to believe on something, why wouldn't that be the thing I focused on? Living life saying I'm going to live a long time instead of worrying about high blood pressure, diabetes, people telling you, oh, black people are subject <laughs> to die <laughs> like it's not a lifestyle. The creator made us broke. He created something that was damaged. And you running around saying you believe in a creator. That's your truth, right? My truth springs out of this book. So if you telling me anything other than this book and you saying you believe in the one God, you're telling a lie. Monotheism came off of Abraham. Anything else is polytheist, and that's not of this book. Um, it's of the New Testament because they got the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit. Some of them even recognize the mother of Jesus. <laughs> we have God-given rights. One nation under God. And your truth is Jesus.